There is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. Spiritual or temporal coadjutors working for the Vatican. Um, well, you know, so, well, there are new things. Well, for example, computers are new, right? Well, they're actually a form of uh, communication and to get information. Cars are new. Well, it's a form of transportation. The gospel is new, right? That's God having mercy and saving men who come to him according to his design. Us Gentiles being grafted into the tree of the Jew? Hmm? Yet it was prophesied under the law that that was going to happen. Hmm. Astonished at it, right? But see... It's really interesting because Satan and his ministers of righteousness. Um, it's very bizarre. They will sling mud like Brother Alberto Rivera talks about in his testimony about how the Jesuits and those who work for the Jesuit order of the Vatican uh, operate by smear campaigns and whispering campaigns and stuff like that. They will do everything they can to find any kind of dirt on you. Uh, we addressed this in the previous video. These, aha, aha, guys, you just said, you just said. It's, go away. Go away. Go kiss Sosa's foot. Okay? And may you choke on his toenail. All right? But these guys will come in to try to shame, slander, bring through the mud, someone of the Church of the Living God, their name. And they want to keep people in the past and sin, shackle them. But when it comes to their own personal past, which some of us have many information on, they will do what they accuse others of. They will use the devil's tools, such as YouTube. We're on, enemies, on the enemy's territory, brethren, while on YouTube. Never forget that, okay? They will use the tools of YouTube to get things taken down and stuff like that. It's interesting because when you come to YouTube with a legitimate gripe about a machine, you never get answered. But yet these devils, muy rápido, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, there is nothing new under the sun. And see, another thing that these devils don't want you to remember is some of their past things that they have done themselves as far as things they have taught or avenues of attack that they went off on, which we addressed in the previous video. But please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, of what we are going to be looking at in the scriptures. Yeah, I say that to you all the time. I want you to follow along in the scriptures. I don't want you to just sit there on your butt passively. Okay? Get involved. Read along with me. Okay, if you come to a portion of the scriptures that we're going to be looking at, you got a question about the context and we don't address it, you know what? Pause the video and look on your own. You know... So you got to do some of this yourself, brother, sister. You got to get into the word yourself. You got to be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You got to get involved, okay? You got to read the word yourself, okay? So follow me along. And also follow me along because my mouth will go faster than the brain sometimes. And I'll, I'll skip a groove, okay? And, um, yeah, so follow me along. I want you to follow me along, please. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 on to verse 11. Yeah, 9 11, isn't that interesting? The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. 
Jesus Christ the same today, yes, uh, yesterday, today, uh, yesterday, tomorrow, and today. I'm just Brad eyes that, but God doesn't change. God does not change. His methods of dealing with mankind changes. Salvation changes within the dispensation, even though the easy believers and devils want you to believe that it's faith alone from Genesis unto Revelation. <sighs> okay? But God himself does not change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? Um, one of you, please, put that in the Brother, okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue. All right. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? Hmm. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things. Ah, yes. But see, the devils, they want to keep people shackled in their past okay that's what you guys do best but when it comes to your past and things that you once stood for before yourselves yeah you don't want that coming up do you you hide your tracks if you make a mistake you don't leave it up there so people could see no no there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Hmm. Now, in context, he is referring, referring on to fleshly things and stuff like that. You can read the context on your own time, okay? This is Solomon, the guy who had it all, who could have anything he desired, just like that. What did he say of it? Vanity of vanity, said the preacher, all is vanity. And also, Ecclesiastes 6, 9 and 10. Check this out. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. It's like, okay, better is the sight of the eyes. But then again, if you look on a maid to lust after her in your heart, you have already committed adultery in your heart already. Okay? The thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? Yes? All right? Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of desire. Than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. No one situation. One might is like, well, it says it's better to see than to go and think, yeah, but he says, this is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Mm. Yeah. Verse 10. That which hath been is named already. And it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. And of course, Matthew chapter 16, just one verse, just one verse. Matthew 16, verse 23. <laughs> A very hated verse of scripture by Catholics. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And remember, the curse of Satan was he was cursed on his belly to eat dust all the days of his life. You and I are made out of dust. Our flesh came from dust. Okay? All right? Satan and his ministers of righteousness want to hide fleshly things in plain sight by claiming they are spiritual. They blur that line. Okay? And you also got to remember now, okay, what we looked at in Ecclesiastes, okay, verse 10 again, that which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. See, now, we as a church of the living God, 
We are to submit unto God first and then resist the devil. Unless you're submitting unto God first, good luck trying to resist the devil. Okay? Satan will laugh at you. His ministers of righteousness will laugh at you and say, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? You know? You fight fire with fire, fire wins. Okay? You don't overcome evil with evil. You overcome evil with good. And there is none good but one who? God. And his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. And see, many infiltrators will come in and try to use those same arguments. But see, what reveals them is their propensity to remain in fleshly things. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. But go now to Job 41. Job 41. Job 41. There are, this is a, the Lord is making a veiled reference onto Satan. Okay? He's talking about Satan. But he calls him Leviathan here. Okay? And some of these coadjutors to defend themselves and also to set up their attack points. I smell something. Oh, that old stench of serpent. I smell something. I smell something. Anyway. Job 41, verses 1 on verse 9. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou put an hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? <laughs> you as man, mankind, you think you can by yourself take on the devil and his angels? Ah! Yeah, Jesus they know and Paul they know, but who are ye? Okay? And you, okay, well, I've submitted myself unto God. Which God have you submitted yourself unto? Which one? See, the God of the scriptures will always drive you away from flesh. Okay? Our spirit and soul are still within this skin suit yes but see the teachings of these ministers of righteousness will always have at their foundation a fleshly foundation always every single time and everything in one roundabout way or another will uplift like the easy believe is a heretic you save yourself by you just believing. And as we discussed in the previous video about reminding you of what they did <laughs> with Romans, the book of Romans. I'm going to touch on that a little bit more today because there is nothing new under the sun, see. What they will do is Satan will use the same arguments, but yet he will repackage them and reformat them and put them out in a different way but yet it's the same arguments same heresy just tweaked a little bit <laughs> I smell something I smell something let's continue in uh, Job 41 verse 3 Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Soft words. Dragon speak. Okay. <laughs> Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the, the companions make a banquet of him? Huh? Shall they part him among the merchants? Now he's talking about Satan. He's talking about Satan. We are told in scripture to submit first unto God and then resist the devil. Okay? Our Lord says, you can do nothing without me. Okay? How are you by yourself 
going to withstand the devil if you are not saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, and the Lord lives within you. How are you going to do it? You can't. The devil may deceive you in thinking that you can or have, but all the while, he got you wrapped around him. He got you wrapped around his little finger, boy. Yeah. Let's continue. Verse 7. Canest thou fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish spears? Hmm? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Remember the battle. Remember the battle. Do no more. Do no more what? Can you do these things to Satan? No. Lord can. Lord can. Prove that to you. Okay. Verse 9. And 10. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? The hope of him is in vain. What, there are some out there who would probably want to argue that the devil himself could probably be get saved, right? Like someone, most of these guys know better. But like in the previous video, we brought up Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order. Uh, okay, yeah, yes, the impossible is possible with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? I've always told you that. But the probability... Of Arturo Sosa. <laughs> of Kenneth Copeland. <laughs> yes, there have been the miraculous. Brother Alberto Rivera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, it's a thing of time. Over time. Time tells many things. That's why it takes time. Because when you watch someone for a while, sooner, if they are false, now we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I've made many. Okay? My mistakes I leave for you to see. So you can see. Okay? But we all make mistakes. Unless your name is Martin Richling, or unless you're from the coasts of England, or someone up uh, in Canada, and I'm not referring to our saved brother from Canada, uh, you make mistakes, unless you're one of these perfect satanic creatures who never have hypocrisy, who never make mistakes, okay? Never do. No, no. They're perfect, remember. Yeah, okay? We make mistakes. We make mistakes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But see... We are sealed until the day of redemption. And you can quench the spirit. Yes, you can. You can sear your, your conscience. Yes, you can. But the Lord will not depart from you. Okay? He will not. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? We have the love of the truth. Now, sometimes we act as if we don't love the truth, yes, but nonetheless, the Lord is within us. And if he gives us over to our destruction, praise be unto him. Okay? But, verse 9 again, Behold, the hope of him is in vain. There are people, dear brethren, who have gone past the point of no return. The Lord can save them. But they're not going to be saved. If we get up at the judgment seat of Christ and we see Arturo Sosa there, then, Lord, can I have that crow, please? And that humble pie? Oh, give me, give me a guess. To <laughs> fire that thing in my head. <laughs> okay? Like I say with Martin Luther. Okay? If we get up, uh, if we get up there and we see him, and, um, okay, Lord, give me that humble pie. Let me eat that crow. Okay? Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Some of these guys, I'm telling you, to, to defend their heresy and to defend themselves and also to defend their attacking points, uh, they would go as far as to probably say that even Satan might be able to repent 
They know better to not outrightly say that, uh, yeah, Sosa, Akaro Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order, yeah, they, they know better not to say, like, okay, yeah, him actually getting saved is probably not going to happen. But they'll go off on other people that, like Kenneth Copeland and whatnot. Why? To defend themselves and to defend their attacking points. Hmm. Yeah. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Even Michael himself, about how they were disputing about the body of Moses. Even Michael, the archangel himself, said of Satan, Hey, the Lord rebuked thee. Michael, the archangel, the Lord rebuked thee. To Satan, the anointed cherub. You read Ezekiel chapter 28. And I love this in verse 10. Who then is able to stand before me? Hmm? You think you're your own God, don't you? Yeah. A lot of you Catholics, you coadjutors, yeah, by things you do, your fleshly uh, things, your fleshly shoe of religiosity that you do, um, yeah, you're your own God, okay, because as we already looked in Matthew, go back there again, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, as we have already seen, Satan savors what? Satan savors what? Uh, verse 16, 23, but he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the, the things that be of God, but those that be of man, be of flesh. Satan's all about this. And the arguments that Satan's ministers of righteousness will use always have this. Always have this at their basis. Always. Always. Okay? And you, you got to remember, and thanks to the brother who uh, put this in the, um, um, or to the individual, excuse me, who put this in the description box of the previous video, of Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. There's nothing new under the sun. That old serpent. Talking about Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5, which we addressed in the previous video. But what were Satan, what was Satan doing? Number one, he attacked what God said. And then number two, he uplifted flesh. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Knowing good and evil. Are you self-sufficient or Christ-dependent? And if you are Christ-dependent, you have no confidence in this. But see, when you start to have confidence in this, <laughs> what God are you serving? Okay? And <laughs> that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them, day, uh, accused them before our God day and night, the accuser of the brethren. Accuser of the brethren. There are some guys out there who are blatantly open about their accusations, okay? Those, those guys are whatever. Those guys are whatever. It's when someone is veiledly accusing. They have the nerve to do it right to your face. Hmm. Yeah. At least if they're doing it to your face, you're able to see how they're doing it and then well, after the fact, after you're kind of dumbfounded, like myself, it's like, what just happened? 
And then the Lord gives you, you know, it's like, look in here, it's like, then that shiver goes up your spine. It's like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Mm. Yes. It takes time, brethren. Now, there are many ways in which we can discern between an actual brother or sister and someone who is a coadjutor. Yes, there is. But we have to remember 1 Timothy chapter 5, okay? All right, now I'm not talking about Captain Obvious stuff, okay? Captain Obvious stuff. But let, let's read. We covered this in the previous video. 1 Timothy chapter 5, we want verses 22 under verse 25. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Wow, you, you believe you got to keep the law that the body of Christ is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble? Huh? The, the, against eternal security? Uh, the New Testament began with the birth of Jesus? How long have you been saved, huh? Oh, between three and five years? Okay, okay. Oh, you mean you've been saved but anywhere between six and ten years? Okay. Oh, you, you've been saved for 25 years, huh? Ha! <laughs> Those are Captain Obvious. Okay? Those are obvious ones. Alright? But there are those out there who purport to believe the same doctrines that you and I as a church of the living God believe. But yet, like Christ himself says, you shall know them by their fruits, which we're going to look at. But you know, discerning fruit if, a, like, for, for example, if you had any dealing with uh, fruit trees, watching them grow, fertilizing them, okay? If you see, like, a pear or a peach in a tree or an apple, and there's brown spots and you got worms coming out of it, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Right. But it takes time, okay? They're growing on that tree. It takes time. And then, okay, it takes time. And then one where that looks like it's so beautiful. It's got that nice, red, delicious color of apple on it. And it looks good. It takes time. It took time to get to that, right? Then you take that apple, ah, bite into it, and worms and brown is all within it. It's like, ugh. See, we are to be fruit discerners. And discerning good fruit does take time. Okay. Now, someone will argue, well, it doesn't take that much time. Okay, define that much time. See, that, that is a subtle, yea, hath God said, argument. It really is. Okay. Like I said, there are some out there, when you hear them talk and see what they believe and whatnot, um, I mean, the, the spirit within us is like, <laughs> dude, you're, you're crazy. You're not one of us. But then there are those guys who are so smooth, who are very careful, who, who, who cross their I's and dot their T's. I said that that way purposely. Who are very good. But see, over time, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. It happens every single time. Every single time. We make mistakes. We make mistakes. But see, when we make a mistake and a brother or a sister refutes you through Scripture, the Lord using that brother or sister and corrects you, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to go on your merry way? Or are you going to submit unto that truth? What are you going to do? And see, these enemies, brethren, take all of this and twist it to use it as an attack, okay? But see, 
like our Lord said, ye shall know them by their fruits. But to discern that takes time. Okay? The time... And see, people... And here's a yea hath God said argument. Well, it ain't going to take that much time. What's how much time? Yeah. Yea hath God said, huh, buddy? Yeah. Verse 24 and 25 again. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Like I said, there are those out there, you know, like Catholics, uh, German Catholics, you know, Lutherans, you know, the Just Believe guys. I mean, now granted, remember too, babes, you know, personally, I've seen, you know, three to five years, babe, uh, okay. Um, and that's not set in stone because I knew, I know a sister of ours who is waiting for us, who advanced in her walk with the Lord in a five to six year period greater than some that have been walking with the Lord for maybe 10 years. Okay, that's because our God is a jealous God. Our God wanted her with him, despite the pain that we don't have her with us right now. But our God is a jealous God, see. He wanted her. He's like that, you know. He already had her, but he was like, come on up. Come home. Never mind this. You're, you're coming with me, girl. Let's go. Okay? But there again, like I said, some men's sins are open beforehand. Some are like... Bruh. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. And some men, they follow after. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand. And they that are otherwise cannot be hid. It takes time. Fruit discerning takes time. Okay? You have any experience with gardening of any kind, you know that. You know that. Okay? You know that. And of course, I've mentioned it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. You've got to remember, Matthew chapter 7 is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? It is. Now, this is true instruction and in righteousness. Uh, Revelation, uh, Revelation, excuse me. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 20. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And of course, you can go ahead and read verses 21 on verse 23. Now, in context, doctrinally, that's for the kingdom of heaven. And we are going to be looking at the modern equivalent for us today within 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay? All right? We are going to be doing that. But the point that I want to get across to you today, brethren, okay? In the previous video... We talked, uh, we talked about how the easy believism devils, in order to defend themselves and their heresy, and also to use it as a mode to attack saved brethren, they attacked Romans chapter 10. And to do so, one of their clever arguments was that they said that Romans 9, 10, and 11 doctrinally are for the time of Jacob's trouble, and they went to Joel and that kind of nonsense and whatnot, okay? That's a lie. Paul, and in the previous video, we went through scriptures to show you this, that the doctor, what Paul wrote in the attributed Pauline epistles is specific doctrine for us today. Okay? All right? And again, if someone's going to come out saying that something within the attributed Pauline, Pauline epistles is written for the time of Jacob's trouble, stay away from that guy. Get away. Run. He's lying. He's teaching you heresy. Okay? Get away from someone like that. All right? That's like, uh, wow. Really? You 
believe that, huh? Okay. All right. All right. And see, in that alone, they'll bring up, well, what about Hebrews? What about Hebrews? That's attributed to Paul. The Pauline epistles, you know, from uh, Romans onto Philemon, clearly identify Paul as their author. And you go ahead and you go ahead and try to do that. Go ahead. See, and that alone, that alone will reveal you. But then they'll come up with the argument, well, what about Hebrews? There is no specific direct link. You can say whatever you want. The author, other than our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is the ultimate author of all scripture. Amen, amen, hallelujah. But the fleshly hand that the Lord used for the book of Hebrews, you can't tell me for sure, yea or nay. Okay? So put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right? But another thing, okay, and this is why we, I uh, brought up with you about there's nothing new. Satan will take his same arguments, repackage them, and put them out with another different minister of righteousness and put it in another way. Okay, again, that example in the previous video about how the devil easy believism heretics Heresy saying that Romans 9, 10, and 11 are doctrinally for the time of Jacob's trouble. That's crazy. That's heresy. Okay? That's heresy. Watch out for someone like that. But another one, and this is something that I unfortunately got messed up in. This whole nonsense that happened, what, about two, three years ago? This whole Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. This whole nonsense that if someone could say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is the Lord, would prove that they were saved. I actually thought that for quite a while until several, including a lost charismatic warning, uh, but many got on me about that. It's like, uh, Fred. And then, it's like, that's, you know. Because, see, a trained temporal or spiritual Jesuit coadjutor, someone who is trained, could easily say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Someone with training could say that does not prove salvation. And of course, uh, when that whole thing blew up, I made videos repenting of it. Um, and I bet that's, you know, people can say that. Devils can say that. It does not prove that they are saved. See, it takes time. It takes time. Okay? It takes time. And when someone starts coming around saying to you that there is a smoking gun, step one, step two, step three, step four test, that on the spot right away you can tell someone is lost or saved, you better watch out for someone like that. Not excluding, okay? That's why we looked at Timothy, okay? That's why we looked at that. There are some that are so obvious that Ray Charles could see it. It was as plain as the nose on um, Jimmy Durante's face. Okay? There are, you know, like the Mormon, Moron, morons, excuse me, the Mormons, the Jehovah's. You know, people who have no knowledge of truth at all, they can be deceived thinking that they're saved. <laughs> I mean, there are those that are obvious. It's like, okay. But then there are those subtle ones that take time to discern, okay? We have the scriptures on how to identify those who are truly saved and those who are truly lost, yes. But see, you got to remember, brethren, if a spiritual or temporal Jesuit co coadjutor could be trained and learn how to mechanically say, 
Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Are you going to try to convince people that just because, say, someone is suffering for the word of God or someone is suffering as a Christian <laughs> proves that's, that's one of your steps? I smell something. I smell something. Absolutely. Through the scriptures, we can discern who is and who isn't. But see, it takes time. Okay, And it's nothing stupid like the, uh, the uh, English, English proven provincial, Jesuit provincial, the hunter, who once said, oh, If I shake a man's hand, I know right away if he's saved. I'm sure you do. Yeah, go go kiss uh, Sosa's foot, okay? Go ahead and don't choke on his toenail, all right? Yeah. Now, like I said, there are those that are plainly, painfully obvious. But then again, remember the spirits identify, dear brethren. The spirits identify. You'll get something that's like, there's something off here. You'll listen to them. It's like, okay. You, you get a hold of them. You have correspondence with them. And then, for example, it's like, oh, okay, that, that's all. That's just, okay, there's a little misunderstanding of Scripture. Let's together go through this, okay? Let's go, to, let's go together through this, okay? Then there are others when you try. And see, the devils are, will do the same thing with us. Who are standing for truth. Okay? They'll do the same thing to us. Who are standing for truth. But they'll do it for the devil, see? Okay? But there are some who, when you try to contact them, they want nothing to do with it. Okay? Alright? Prove me wrong through scripture. Alright? Tell me to go here. Go here. Go there. Hmm? Let's see. Let's converse civilized instead of talking down to people as if they're inferior to you. I smell something. I smell something. Okay? I smell something. I, I smell something. But see, brethren, there's nothing new under the sun. Satan is taking... His, the arguments that he has used that others have already proven false, repackaging them through a different minister of righteousness, okay, and coming out with virtually the same thing in a different way, okay? The scriptures and the Lord, who is that spirit who will guide you into all truth. How many of you have, like, when you've heard a, a preacher or something like that, at first you're like, Okay, sounds good, but there's something off, and you're like, okay, I'm, you know what, I'm just going to put, put that away for a while. The Lord's like, stay away. Brethren, come on, okay? Come on. It's like, that's, there's something, sounds good, but there's something, I'm just going to wait and see. And then over time, it's like, oh, okay. It was never all of us in the first place, even though you sound like you are. No wonder, no wonder you want to start contesting certain things. No wonder. No wonder. Okay? No wonder. Now, in the previous video, uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That's where we're going to. We're, we, we got a little bit to go through here today. Um, unfortunately, these are not things that I wanted to do. But I have no choice. Oh, I have a choice. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I could say no, and then the Lord will chase me, rebuke me, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He has called me to a certain thing, and I want to do what he said because it's not at gunpoint. Okay? I do have a choice. If I choose not to do what he says, <laughs> I'm going to be in some trouble. Okay? But we're going to be reading out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 about this. But I want to bring this to your attention. Okay? 
Not everybody you encounter who is fake is a Jesuit. It's not. Usually you will see a tie onto the Jesuit order somewhere in there. Uh, but then again, the Jesuits are very smart and in intelligent and subtle. I, I'm never, I have never forgotten about Smiley Dave, who in one of his uh, Prophecy Brother Thing podcasts or on the channel of, that he has, you know, Chick Publications, um, he, in a video, called Jesuit James White his brother. Jesuit James White, who hates the authorized version of the scriptures. Um, he, he's a Jesuit, okay? You couldn't convince me otherwise. Brethren brought that up to Mr. Smiley Dave about uh, what he said of uh, Jesuit James White. Even His Holiness brought that up. And amen for him doing that. It's like, you called Jesuit James White your brother? Okay? And when confronted out of love by several Smiley Dave said, and this is this was telling to me, there is no paper trail evidence to prove that James White is a Jesuit. It's like, <laughs> dude, are you, dude, are you, really? Really, dude? Okay, really? If anyone, okay, uh, the, the, my safe Canadian brother could even testify of that. He, he's got a problem with me that's okay i love him he's my brother it doesn't matter he's my brother if he want if i if he needs me i'm there for him but even my safe canadian brother would be you know like uh the jesuits could uh, expunge anything to hide anybody to say that jesuit james white that there's no paper trail evidence to show that he's a jesuit coming from S smiley dave he, of all people, should have known better than to say that. And knowing that the only time that Smiley Dave shows fire is uh, towards brethren of the Church of the Living God, that was when it was, for me especially, it's like, you, you should know better than to say something like that. But whatever. And with, with every pun intended, from... Chick publications. Okay? Um, uh, the, the one brother, uh, one guy, uh, I forget what you're, um, Lee or whatever. Um, if you, you watching this, you have the means there, uh, get the testimony by, our, uh, by um, Alberto Rivera. Okay? The six-part testimony of Alberto Rivera. And read that. That'll, that'll give you a good good crash course into the Jesuit order, okay? And you got to remember, brethren, the Jesuit order controls everything because the Lord is allowing them to do so, okay? The Freemasons, okay, all the high-level Freemasons are controlled by the Jesuit order, not the Jesuit order control the, uh, not the Freemasons, excuse me, control the Jesuit order, even though the Freemasons were there longer than the Jesuits. The Jesuits are far more powerful and have far more reach and a lot more money than the Freemasons. They really do. The Freemasons are controlled by the Jesuit order. Not vice versa, okay? But, I'm going to just share with you, okay, this page, okay, let me see, okay, let me see, okay, if you can, pause that and read it, you know, get a screenshot and zoom in on it, I'm going to be reading this page, here are the types of Jesuits and those who work for the Vatican that we got to watch out for, and you got to remember, not everybody who is a coadjutor or, or infiltrator, I should say, is a Dog collar wearing Jesuit. But Jesuitism, which is Satanism, is there in some way. All right. Over the next 10 to 14 years, an intensive weeding out process takes place. Candidates are regularly tested and placed in different groups and levels. The first class of the Jesuit, the professed, 
These are priests with SJ after their names, if they want to be known. Only a few of the Jesuits make it to this class. This means that the vast majority of Jesuits are not priests visible. They take four vows, obedience, poverty, chastity, and special obedience to the Pope, i.e. the blood oath, the Jesuit extreme oath. Okay, which can be found on this channel in a link in the uh, about section. Okay, second class, and here's the ones that we are more, more likely dealing with. The second class, the form coadjutors. There are two kinds one, a spiritual coadjutors, these are lesser priests who can only hear confessions, preach, and teach. And here are the more dangerous ones. Okay, uh, The A-type spiritual coadjutors, they're, they're already known. The guy from New York, a couple from Canada, okay? Uh, a couple from down, uh, no, at least the one guy from down under. <laughs> Quite a few from England, okay? Yes, a lot here in America, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. But out of the form coadjutors, it's B that we are most at war with. Temporal coadjutors. These are at the bottom of the barrel. Who, with no spiritual authority, whatsoever. They work as cooks, guardians, etc., as long as they live for the greater glory of God. But however, they'll spring into action whenever called upon. See, James Atkin Weil, see, uh, like the provincial from England once made a video which he long ago erased, about um, Jesuits do not interfere in the small people. Uh, that's not true. You could be at a gas station and the guy behind the counter taking your money at the gas station could be a Jesuit. Okay? The Jesuits are not that petty to try to rule all of mankind in order to hand it over to that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Don't for one second fall for that. Okay? Okay? Um, the banker, the person at the grocery store, okay, especially in the religious realm, excuse me, okay. Third class, approved scholastics. You know, you know, in the buildings, it's like, you need the credentials, you need the $100,000 piece of paper on your wall. <laughs> Six Jesuit order, dear friends, have long infiltrated all the, especially in America, all the cemetery schools, all of higher learning in and of itself in the uh, controlled atmosphere is controlled by the Jesuits. Okay? Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks if you think otherwise. That's not conspiracy theory. That's conspiracy fact. Okay, wake up. Wake up. Okay, approved scholastics. This is a student who promises to lay his future in the hands of his superior. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of these youngins out there who have their brethren who are questionable, whether they're uh, uh, A or B uh, forms... Uh, Coadjutor, whether it's spiritual or temporal. Hmm. This is a student who promises to lay his future in the hands of his superior, who will decide after his 10 to 14 years of study where he will end up in the system. Whether he becomes a Jesuit priest or a janitor, he trusts that his superior speaks for God. Yes, yes, because the Jesuit sees... Sosa as God. Okay? We've, we've proven that in many videos before. Fourth class. 
still indifferent. It has not been decided where these people belong. They too must trust their superior as God and wait up to 14 years for his decision. Their goal is an elite team of the most dedicated men in the world. Yeah, men who will of willing mind go down on a sinking ship and die for ad majorium the glorium, the greater glory of God, will do anything for their Jesuit general without thought or hesitation. The Jesuit goal is to make the world serve the Pope by hook or by crook. you got to remember, these coadjutors, by the way, are the ones who will spring into action out of nowhere. And uh, do as bidden as their Jesuit masters have um, commanded them to. Like, they come out of nowhere, and their very first videos that they make or whatever is attacking someone. And then they come out with the fact that they are easy believism and say that Paul was writing for another dispensation within the Pauline epistle. Well, what about Hebrews? <laughs> Yeah, hath God said, you'll do anything to defend yourself and to defend your satanic doctrine in order to defend yourself, to put on the suspension of disbelief that you're actually of us, and also to attack. Well, I believe brother so-and-so, he's a brother. He's just teaching contrary to scripture. He's leading people away from Christ, huh? That's the direction you're going to go in next, isn't it, boy? Yeah. Yeah, but see, there's nothing new under the sun. Satan's taking the same arguments, the same things that he's already done. And see, they overload you with new, new, new things, and there's nothing new. So when the time when Satan comes back out with his repackaged heresy, well, where, where are the other videos? Where are the, the proof of this? On their end, they've deleted them and gotten rid of them. Even though you save all of them, don't you? Don't you? You've proven that already. Yeah. Okay, now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Go to 1 Corinthians. Y yes! There are, yes, we have the scriptures to discern who is of us and who is not. But this litmus test, muy rápido, right away, other than Captain Obvious, and knowing you, knowing guys like you, you try to twist that and focus on the, well, what is the obvious, right? Yea, hath God said, I smell something. I smell something. Now, out of respect, I'm not naming. But if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, it might be. So, and I praise the Lord that hopefully he allows these to get out before someone can do exactly what we have been talking about in these two videos. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses, let's read, verses 1 on to verse 2 to start. And I, brethren... When I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now, wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But what wisdom is he making a refer reference onto? Because he came to them and, were, and, and look at verse 3, okay? Uh, someone, you know, one of these sly, subtle guys who's like, you just said, you just said, shut up! Yeah, wisdom is equated with the fear of the Lord. But this wisdom here that he mentions, look at verse 3 there, hotshot. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Fear of the Lord. Okay? So the wisdom that Paul is referring to in verse 1 is not the fear of the Lord. Okay? And verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, nonetheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Sealed unto the day of redemption, you know, sealed with the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, okay? I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved, the past tense, loved me, and gave, past tense, himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? Now, okay, we're going to look at Romans chapter 8, which these heretics can't stand Romans chapter 8. They can't stand it. Because Paul makes a distinguishing, the Lord through Paul, excuse me, makes a distinguishing thing about the battle with the spirit and the flesh. Okay? And these Jesuit spiritual or temporal coadjutors hate it because they're all about the flesh okay all right go to galatians chapter 3 and here is where you begin to spot someone who says they are of us but they ain't galatians 3 verses 1 on to verse 4 oh foolish galatians who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Now hold up! Hold up! Was Jesus Christ crucified literally before the eyes of the Galatians? Were they there at the actual crucifixion? No. How was Christ, what is Paul talking about? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Okay, what is he talking about? Um, that we just saw in Galatians chapter 2. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Remember what we looked at in uh, 1 Timothy Okay, chapter 5, brethren, okay? Chapter 5, verses 24 and 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Captain Obvious! Going before judgment. And some men they follow after. Takes time. Likewise also good the good works of some are manifest beforehand, which a lot of these fakes can mimic. Okay, we're going to look at that, Okay. And they that are otherwise cannot be hid. These Jesuits, these devils, can for a while, for a time, mimic these tests that people come up with. But it takes time to be a fruit discerner. It takes time. And when someone comes around saying there's a, I mean, like I said, okay, and this is an argument that they would attack being petty to try to defend themselves, okay? Forgoing the Captain Obvious. We just read that in Second Timothy and First Timothy chapter five. Okay? There are some that are so smooth, so subtle, that you have to watch them, you have to hear them over time to be a fruit discerner. Okay? All right? Now, like I said, there are some that are like, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, go away. You, 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 you believe what? You've been safe for how long? Okay, okay, you might, look, you might be a babe, okay. Let's talk a little. Whenever you got time, let's talk a little, okay? And you don't talk down to them as if they're inferior. You talk to them as if they are your own brother out of love. Okay? Or, and then you run into someone that's like, how long you claim to be safe? <laughs> 20 years, huh? And I tell you about rightly dividing, and you think I'm a heretic? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, sure. Okay? But see, it goes back to that thing of the flesh, brethren. The flesh. This only would I learn of you, Galatians 3, verse 2. Receive ye the capital S spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Oh boy! Do you know that, like in Japan, the Jesuits and those that went to Japan got their nose and ears cut off? Do you realize that there are Catholics that are suffering right now? Okay? Suffering right now. Yeah. Yeah, okay? So the level of suffering is a testing point? Okay. Okay, really. Hmm. But go to Romans chapter 8 now. Romans chapter 8. The devil and his ministers of righteousness can pull off a lot of what some of you are saying is a step one, two, three, four test to absolutely prove. Hmm? I smell something. I smell something. And why are they bringing that up? Number one, to defend themselves and also to start an attack on someone else. That's the two reasons why you're doing it. I smell something. Hmm. Romans chapter 8. Now, we make mistakes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But see, that's the difference. Someone who is not of us and has fallen away, proven that you were, they were never of us, they don't have the Lord within them. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No wonder. No wonder there was adamance there. Duh! I see that now. Yeah. Okay. But Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 8 on to verse 14. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now see, right away, these coadjutor devils to defend themselves and their uh, attacking points that they are trying to establish. They're, so, they're saying, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, Brad, well, Brad, huh? Your spirit and soul are in the flesh. Uh, in the flesh, meaning walking in the flesh. Okay? In 1 John, I believe it's chapter 3, Paul, uh, Paul, excuse me, John is talking about that, okay? You have to make the right decision. The Lord is there with, in you, with you. You have to make the decision to do according to what he says to do. He's not holding it, holding you at gunpoint to make the right decisions. You have to make the right choices to walk according to the scriptures, okay? And when you go contrary to that, what else are you following if not the Lord? The flesh. And who has a thing about the flesh? <laughs> the devil. Hmm? The devil. Okay? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the capital S spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Captain Obvious. Yes. Yes, eternal security, okay? This is also a good verse for eternal security, okay? Uh, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the capital S Spirit is life because of righteousness, Okay? This does not mean, though, that you can't be an idiot and make the wrong decision and decide to go after the flesh. That's what Romans chapter 6 is about, dear friend. Okay? 
All right, let's continue. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The way to, of escape. Okay? With every temptation. This is true. Either this is true or God's lying. With every temptation, God will make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Do we always go for that way of escape? No, we don't. Paul didn't in Acts chapter 21, did he? Peter didn't in Galatians chapter 2, did he? Okay? It's all about making the right choices. Okay? God doesn't want a robot. Okay? Get that through your head, please. You have to make the right decisions. He saves you. You don't save yourself. He saves you. But he's not going to force you to do what's right. I, I wish it were otherwise. I, I do, right? Then it'd be a little bit easier. Yeah. But he wants us to make the right choices. Not because we got to, but because we want to. And, and verse 12 here. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the capital S spirit do mortify, kill the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the capital S spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so many come in with these uh, works uh, of things that they're doing, these uh, traditions of men. You know, uh, they come. Oh, where, where is that? Uh, with the where is that? That's in Philippians, isn't it? That's in uh, isn't that in Philippians? Where or is that in uh, Colossians? Uh, one second, let me find that. Okay, that was excuse me. That's Colossians chapter two, verses eighteen on to verse twenty-three. Let no man beguile you with. But let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly carnal mind. And not holding the head. Note the capital H there. From which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Not holding the head, but actually holding the foot of Arturo Sosa. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. Which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. And see these very subtle, smooth, sly coadjutors will try to disguise commandments of men as spiritual and go try to go to scripture to defend that. God, be careful, brethren. These last days deception. Okay? Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will worship and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. They look really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So does that apple that looks really good because it took time to germinate, and it looks good on the outside, but then you take it, and it's, uh, See? Let's go back to Romans chapter 8. Okay, verse 14 again. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And, you know, as I made the egregious 
grievous error of believing that if someone could say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is the Lord, that that proves someone is saved, and I was wrong about that. I repented of that. You can find the videos on the this channel and never hit them. Um, okay, I was wrong about that, and I lie and praise the Lord. I some devils that were all into that. Once they got labeled, they went away and praise the Lord. Go to hell anytime soon. Okay, but see Satan. It seems like he might be able to, might be getting set up to try that same thing, but in a different way. I smell something, man. I smell something. I'm giving you courtesy. Because you will know who you are. But not everyone else will. I'm giving you this courtesy. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But I smell something. Now, let's look at, because, you know, I believed that a devil couldn't fake. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I believed that. I was wrong. And then when you got someone coming around, it's like, there are these four things that nobody can fake. A Jesuit, he can't fake it. No, he can't. No, he can't. Yes, he can. To a point. And see, to get to that point takes time. Not that much time. Dude. Dude. Come on. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Now, this whole thing about God hardening Pharaoh's heart, right? Right? Uh, you're going to try to tell me that Pharaoh could have, the Pharaoh in Exodus could have repented, right? Uh, you got to remember. When God hardened Pharaoh's heart, Pharaoh's heart was already past the point of no return. <gasps> yeah, you know why? Because the Pharaohs, excuse me, that's the right uh, pronunciation. Thank you, brother. The Pharaohs were seen and saw themselves as gods. The pharaohs were worshipped as gods. So Pharaoh already in his heart believed him to himself to be a god. So that hardness was already there. Okay? Watch out for someone who's going to go point to Pharaoh in Exodus and harp on, yes, God did harden his heart. Yes, he did. But his heart was already at a point of no return. The Lord just continued him on that path. Okay? Like uh, Yuri Bezmenov talked about uh, subversion. You know, the best way to defeat an enemy when your enemy is lunging at you with a fist to block it uh Causes, you know, can hurt you and expels unnecessary energy. Okay? That's why you don't fight fire with fire. They come at you with a punch. What do you do? Boom! Step out of the way. Block it. Help them. Just, you know, misdirect. Right? Misdirect their force. Because when someone leans in on you to hit you in the face, okay, you can block it, but they, they some people hit really hard. They could break your forearm. Okay? They could, you know, you could break your forearm, break your hand, or whatever. No, the best thing is, step out of the way, block it, redirect it so they fall right on their face. See? Hmm? Okay? <laughs> Exodus chapter 7. 
Exodus chapter 7, verses 10 on to verse 12. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Okay? Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. And I love this. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. The truth will always swallow up error. Absolutely. So right there. Okay? Now, you might want you want to get petty about the, well, it didn't take that much time. We don't actually know the time frame thereof. Okay? Okay? Now, go now to Exodus chapter 7, verses 19 on to verse 23. Okay? All right? The point we're looking at is, is that Satan can mimic a lot of these surefire tests. It takes time to discern fruit, brethren. Again, except for the painfully obvious, okay? Which there are a lot out there. A lot that are, like Mark the Messenger. Painfully obvious. That guy's not saved, okay? Painfully obvious, all right? Okay? Um, Bible flock box. That guy's not saved. Okay, a lot of these charismatic guys, Sid Roth and all these uh, female uh, prophets who do the uh, bobbling and stuff like that. These guys who go to heaven and to hell and come back and write a book and make a movie. Come on, those guys are obvious. Not obvious onto the people who want to eat that up because... Over time, Satan's infiltration has dumbed down the truth. And now, as we spoke about in the previous video, that which would have been called heresy even 30 years ago is now accepted as truth. The conditioning has happened, brethren. Uh, the redemption of the purchased possession could happen at any time. The stage is set. But let's continue. In Exodus chapter 7, verses 19, on to 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Vessels of wood and vessels of stone, wood that gets burned up and stone that abides the fire. Hmm. But then again, remember, Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And Moses and Aaron did so, as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish, and remember, the Nile, there was uh, links to divinity um, with the Nile and Pharaoh, remember? Okay? And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Verse 22. And the magicians of Egypt, surprise, surprise, did so with their enchantments. Did what? Turn water into blood. You see some of these magicians on TV, like that, uh, that, that angel guy, and some of them other guys where they are able to do these miraculous things without ropes and wires, uh, devils are assisting these people. It's re that's real, okay? That's real, okay? These, some of these like David Copperfield and stuff like that. Uh, no, that's you're seeing devils doing those things, okay? Yeah, yeah. So the magicians also were able to mimic the water is the blood, huh? Right? 
like the Catholic, this symbolizes the wafer cookie and a former, still on the One Proverbs channel, uh, a uh, uh, whatever the thing is for your channel, the screenshot or whatever, you know, your image. <laughs> yeah. So they were, t they could mimic the water to blood too. Just like uh, I remember that Chris Angel guy also turned water to wine himself. Yeah. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. Hmm. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. Now go to chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 7. Okay? And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land. And you look into Egyptian mythology, there was a god that had a frog face. All of the judgments in Exodus were, was God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, mocking and showing up the gods of Egypt. Okay? And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. I don't know if y'all have never had frog legs before. Oh, that would be very good. Yes, with Tabasco sauce, and yes, with teriyaki as well. Oh, you have that with a little jambalaya too, boy. Oh, I like me some frog legs. I sure do. Very good. Thank you, fine. Let's continue. Verse 7, And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Hmm. But see, the thing we got to remember, dear brethren, I, I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon. One of the things we got to remember, and what I am stressing to you, okay, there are some that are out there that are so painfully obvious, not saved, not of the church of the living God, um, that it's appalling. There are some out there who are messed up, who worship men. Yes, saved brethren fall. Yes, yes. But see, fake, who are not of us. You can only go so far until there comes something that they cannot fake themselves. Even though they try really hard to do so. Okay? Remember, to be anti-Christ is not to only be against, but to replace. Now in Exodus chapter 8, verse 16 on to verse 19. See, Satan can mimic these things up to a point, and it takes time to discern fruit, brethren. Unless, of course, again, as I have been saying, unless it is obvious, okay? Where Jimmy Durante's, is uh, like the nose on Jimmy Durante's face, or even Ray Charles could see it, okay? Exodus chapter 8, verses 16 on to verse 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Dust, that it might become lice. And wouldn't you know that in historical documentation, lice was a major problem as recorded by the Egyptians? Because a lot of them went bald and had wigs, remember? There was a massive lice problem within ancient Egypt. Oh, gee, I wonder where that came from. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. There, uh, hold on. Verse 18. 
and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. But they could not. They could not. So there was lice upon man and upon beast. There are those out there who have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof from such turn away. More on that in a little bit. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And remember, Pharaoh already believed himself to be a god before the Lord even went along and like the thing about the uh, guiding someone's fist after they throw a punch at you, just stepping out of the way and, and helping them go along in their fall, okay? <laughs> you just said, you just, shut up. Shut up, man. Shut up. So, Satan can mimic the things of God. These tests that you want to come up with that you could do, like you meet someone, you ask them four or five questions. It's like, okay, all right. Now, like I said, in meeting people, and if you're saved, you know what I'm talking about. You'll talk to some people, and it's like, you really, okay. And the Lord's saying, this guy's not, a, said, yes, Lord, I know that. But then again, there are those that can say all the right things, go through the right things, and it's like, Sounds good. I'm going to give it a little time to see, to inspect that fruit. Okay? And this is such a, you know, this, you know, you see only what you see in a video. Okay? You do. It's what you are beyond this. Okay? All right? Where it's you and the Lord and others will see. Okay? Many people put on a good facade while the camera's rolling. The person you see here is the person you would meet in, in public. Okay? Now, you might be saying, well, Brad, that's Old Testament. Yes, it is. Go to 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Okay? 2 Corinthians 11. Jesuits, fakes, can't fake these certain things. Over time, maybe not. But in order to fool people in a rapido succession, yes, they can. Yes, they can. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 18, on to verse 30. Hmm. <clears throat> Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Hmm. For ye suffer fools who say in their heart there is no God, gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. See, see what that says? They're, you're calling yourself wise as if you have the fear of the Lord, but yet you're enduring fools who say in their heart there is no God. Hmm. For you suffer if a man bring you into bondage. Because it sounds good. We already addressed that in what was that? Uh, Colossians, right? For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage. If a man devour you. If a man take of you. If a man exalt himself. If a man smite you on the face. <laughs> I speak as concerning reproach. As though we had, as though we had been weak. Howbeit wherein soever any is bold. I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to what Paul is saying. You're saying that there is this step one, two, three, four of certain things that fake people can't uh, fake, right? That, uh, yeah, well, no, they can't. No, they, yes, they can. You better be careful, buddy. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Now, hold on. Are they claiming to be saved? I am. They're claiming to be saved. Hmm. 
Are they Israelites? So am I. We worship the same God you do. We're with you. We're one of you. Oh, okay. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Okay? They're can't, people are claiming to be of the church of the living God. Hmm? I'm of the church of the living God. But so are a lot of other people claiming to be. But, okay, you shall know them by their fruits, and you can find out right away by asking these couple of questions. Now, again, excluding the obvious things, okay? But remember, the level of deception that we are going to be encountering, brethren, is not going to be brazen. It's going to be, and this is how it has been all throughout history, but it's increasing now because the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. So, okay. They're claiming to be ministers of Christ. Masquerading. Transforming into ministers of righteousness. Okay? I am more. Okay? In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. And death's off. So wait a minute. He says, I am more. In labors, more abundance. In strife, stripes, excuse me, above measure. Wait a minute. So is Paul somewhat telling us that those who are fake will go through a lot of the same things? Wow, imagine that. Of the Jews, five times received I, uh, of the Jews, five times received I, 40 stripes save one. You gotta remember, while uh, Alberto Rivera was um, within the Jesuit order, he would get arrested with those whom he was messing up in order to put off the suspension of disbelief. Okay? As an infiltrator, Alberto Rivera also suffered things as an infiltrator. Smooth, boy. Mm. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Okay? See, these ministers of righteousness will go through sufferings and persecutions themselves, okay? It's, it's theater to put off the suspension of disbelief that they are of us because, look, we're suffering too. We have the fruit of righteousness too. Yes. you got to keep watching them. It takes time. Because what if they happen to be an apple that is so beautiful on the outside, but yet you bite into it, it's rotten and filled with worms, huh? I smell something, man. Let's continue. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, yeah. in perils by the he, uh, heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, and the wolf who doesn't truly care for the flock will run away. Because they're all about themselves. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? And here it is. Verse 30. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. I can't do this. I can't. I have no confidence in myself and my flesh. Are you crazy? I'm not self-sufficient. I'm Christ-dependent. If anything good comes from me, it's of the Lord. Anything else is of 
the flesh making bad decisions. And see these tests based upon scripture have at their basis just to test the fleshly things which devils can imitate can mimic to a point but it takes time to discern that fruit you want to pee moan and whine about well how much time how much time yeah if God said you go ahead and run along and waste your time go ahead fact is okay fact is it takes time to discern fruit apart from that which is obvious okay beware brethren and you're right brethren we don't have a lot of time do we we don't but you got to remember that lay hands on no one suddenly you know, I've done that before, and I have been burnt so many times. And I appreciate from the experience that I learned from the scoundrel devils over this time. I appreciate the things I have learned from them about not laying hands on someone suddenly. My fault is that I am the one who is more willing to extend my hand to someone who will not, no one else will. That's my fault. And yes, that has bit me in the backside more often than not. Okay? It has. Okay? Go back now to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. What does that mean? Keep reading. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Aha. Aha. See, Paul in verse 4 says, I know nothing by myself. And Satan says, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? Satan says that you by yourself are capable of knowing what is good and evil. Paul is saying, I don't know what is truly good and what is evil. The only way I know that is from the Lord. And the scriptures for us today. Okay? All right? Man in and of himself is incapable of truly judging what is good and what is evil. Okay? We judge ourselves through Scripture first, then we can judge others. Okay? And see, you know, <laughs> I bet you sooner or later someone who is going about to, trying to drudge up that there is a ipso fast facto one two three four five six seven eight whatever test sooner or later that individual is going to run into don't judge aren't you and you know what you're going to do you're going to go to this verse therefore judge nothing before the time until the lord come who will both who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart and then shall every man have praise of God. Oh, I guess that's written for another dispensation, isn't it? Till the Lord come. Hmm? And the Lord says, uh, where is that? In John, hold your place there. That is what, John, brother? Uh, where is that? Uh, if I, uh, is that John 15? Is that John 15 or is that John 16? Uh, one second. I gotta find this. <laughs> I was looking right at it. Okay, uh, John sixteen, uh, verses seven on to verse thirteen. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the capital C Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin 
and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because they because the prince of this world is judged I have many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now Howbeit, when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come so when you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, where he says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Hmm? Oh, I guess that's for another dispensation, huh? No! Before the Lord come, save someone else out there. Okay? And then when the Lord comes, when the Lord saves someone, seals them until the day of redemption, today, what happens? Who will both who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall they then shall every man have praise of God. What our Lord was talking about would happen upon the Spirit of Truth entering into somebody. Okay? They would. You would try to say to defend yourself and your attacking points. That verse 5 there is talking about for another dispensation because you'll focus on until the Lord come and ignore all the rest of the sandwich. You smooth, smooth, sly guy. Mm. Very good. Very good. But let's continue. Uh, see, and again, brethren, the fakes will point to this. See, judge nothing before the time. Okay, the Lord hasn't come yet. Uh, he's in me. Okay. He is in me. And he has opened my eyes unto the truth and unto your heresy. Okay? That's what that's talking about. They would. They probably, guys like that would probably say, well, no, that, that's for another dispensation. <laughs> Why? Brethren, I'm telling you again. Watch out for anyone who's going to tell you within the attributed Pauline epistles that Paul was writing for doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. Watch out for someone like that. Get away from them. Okay? They either really messed up or they're not of us. And which one is it, huh? And they'll go to lengths to defend themselves and to attack others by twisting the scriptures. Wow. Let's continue. Okay? And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. And what is written? That there is none righteous. No. Not one. There is none that doth good. Okay? That no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Pride, which I have a horrendous struggle with every day. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? This is my ministry. This is my stuff. My, 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 my. Now are ye full. Your head must hurt with all that knowledge you got, right? Yeah. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. This is Paul's sarcasm. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also, that we might also, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. And when you, you hear about these Christians today with the God loves you, they get a, a, a martyr complex because they, uh, because they run into an atheist who rightly says, that's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. That doesn't make sense. You're saying God loves me unconditionally, but he's going to send me to hell? Uh, that makes absolutely no sense, okay? But they're suffering for Christ. 
Hmm? They have the fruit of the Spirit. They have a... Remember the thing about the changed life, okay? Okay? An alcoholic... A guy goes to Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. They can have a changed life, but they're not a new creature. There's a difference between being a new creature that brings about change and you, the old man, bringing your own change on, in, on yourself out of your own self-will. Okay, there's a big difference. And there's only so far that change can go. We are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. We are weak. But ye are strong, aren't you? Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Yeah. Multitude of subscribers, huh? Yeah. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Amen, amen, hallelujah. No certain dwelling place. Even the Son of Man had nowhere to rest his head. And yet God loves you. God wants you to be happy, right? And labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer. it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as as the filth of the world, and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. <laughs> For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, oh yeah, oh there are so many of them Christians out there, ain't there? Yeah. Yet have ye not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus have I begotten you through the gospel. Now, a heretic will come and say, like, Ah, Paul's calling himself a father. Not as a title. Spiritual father. It, it explains itself right there. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Okay? Paul is not taking upon himself Father Paul. Okay? The Lord rebuke you. But see, that's the nitpicky level of these heretics. Okay? Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Because Paul was our example on how to follow Christ within this dispensation with the doctrine that was accounted to him within the Pauline epistles. You're going to say that well, something Paul wrote within the attributed Pauline epistles was written for the time of Jacob's trouble. The Lord rebuke you. That's heresy. That's heresy. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. Right here. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. The power. One can change their own life, but that's power that's based on flesh. One can speak with authority, but that's power of flesh. The power of Christ is a new creature. It's a big difference. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Actually, walking the talk, especially when it's just you, the Lord, and the four walls, the ceiling, and the floor. What will ye? Shall I come on to you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? Brethren, people are going to come out closer to the redemption of the purchased possession with surefire ways that you could do this, that, and the other thing, and 
uh, in veiled ways, use the scriptures to glorify their flesh. You got to watch out for these people. You got to watch them and uh, judge them by their fruits. Okay. Be aware of this deception, brethren, that is coming. That is here. That is here. And be aware of people who come to you sounding so sweet and innocent and yet are going to twist scripture, number one, to defend themselves and number two, to establish an attacking point so they can attack others. While all the while holding back with civility saying, well, I'm not doing that. I believe he's saved. He's just anti-Christ, teaching contrary to Scripture, leading people astray. But, hey, he just believes. Ah, he's saved. He's just messed up. How are you supposed to know? Oh, well, here, I'll give you a one, two, three, four, five. A test. Yeah. Which devils can do. Which takes time to discern the fruit there. You're going to do what you're going to do. But Lord willing, this will come out before you come out with whatever you're going to come out with. To warn people. I, I hope I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I will publicly admit to it. I, I've done that before. That's how it works. Okay? But like I said, I'm being, I'm giving courtesy. And you know, those of you devils out there, it drives you crazy that I'm not naming you because you want that publicity. Any publicity is good publicity, right? I'm being courteous and showing a little grace. So, cautious brethren. Cautious. Cautious. Because everything that is false, sooner or later, is all going to revolve around flesh. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us, who help us. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Um, the Lord has rebuked me recently about staying in touch with the brethren. So that's something that's going to be happening. Um, once a week, getting a hold of certain brethren, a couple of brethren overseas that I'm going to try to get a hold of tomorrow. So, um, and sisters as well. So, anyway, thank you for watching this. If you do, love you. See you in the next video.